Welcome to CES 2019. We're bringing you all the latest tech, the coolest stuff, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the Las Vegas Convention Center. This is North Hall, and this is the Bell booth. Bell is based in Texas. Chad here is from Business Development, and you guys have a concept of what you think the future of air travel will be, but I think it's more than that. It's travel in general. Is that right? It is travel in general. You know, this, this concept vehicle on a, really the future of urban air mobility is an exciting glimpse into what we think the future of not just passenger transport is going to be, but even logistics movement in the future. This seems to have the, the features of an Osprey and a drone uh, all together into one. Well, what's really remarkable about this vehicle is we've been doing what we call transformational lift for almost 40 years. So vehicles that take off vertically and then fly on wing. And so we've leveraged all of that investment and in technology into this next generation of air travel. Does this, is this safer? Uh, is it faster? Is it more efficient? Talk to me about the properties of having multiple rotors, having them be able to take off vertically and then uh, turn so you can go this way. Absolutely. Uh, there are so many benefits of this new design, safety being paramount to what's really in Bell's DNA. So the ducted rotors on the vehicle make it feel safe and approachable. There are acoustic benefits of a rotor like this that change the noise signature from what is sometimes in a helicopter more obtrusive to uh, really a nice hum that comes off of this that would just blend into an urban landscape. Uh, is this autonomous? Is the idea of this to be autonomous? Is it literally an air taxi that is going to pick you up somewhere and fly you somewhere else without a pilot? So we, we're starting the design of the vehicle from day one to be fully autonomous. But we understand that from a community acceptance standpoint, which is really important, that we'll need to have uh, safety pilots that are there to help manage and maintain and create comfort and confidence around operation of the vehicle in the early days. I keep saying at CES this year, especially with all the AI and the voice control for home automation, that it seems like we're getting more towards the Jetsons. This actually makes it feel like we are getting to the Jetsons. Yes, Bell is actively working to pull the future to the left. And so this is not a horizon that's out in the 2040s or 50s time frame. This technology in this vehicle is mature, and we expect to be able to enter it into service in the mid-2020s. Is this something that you see uh, being affordable uh, for the passenger? Absolutely. The, the economics of the vehicle are such an important aspect so that we put it into a category that makes it safe and affordable for everyone to use. Our idea is not VIP transport. Our idea is transportation for the masses. I start looking at it, I notice there aren't a ton of rivets, screws holding this together. Makes me believe that this is maybe a carbon fiber skin. Is this just a concept or is this actually how it will be the way you envision it when it becomes a working prototype? So what you see behind us is really a, a pretty close representation of what we believe the final product will look like. And it'll take advantage of all of the latest advances in manufacturing technology, including some of the latest work in advanced composites and graphite epoxy systems, as well as 3D manufacturing. So it, it is like a, a possibly carbon fiber composites and, and also 3D manufacturing, 3D printing basically. That's correct. So to really get to an affordable point, we take advantage of all of the latest technologies that allow us to produce the vehicle economically and at scale. It seems like that would make it a little bit lighter, easier to service, uh, and maybe more affordable, not only when you deliver it, but also down the road. Well, our plan behind the design really incorporates uh, features like 3D printing to create simplicity in the design so that, as you point out, uh, the maintenance, repair, uh, design and manufacturing all have been highly simplified to create that correct economic for the masses. You said uh, before, and I'm seeing it over on the video over your shoulder, you, you, you mentioned that it's a fixed wing aircraft. It's kind of a combination uh, with a fixed wing and that that gives it uh, a lot more stability. Yes, it takes advantage of a number of features of fixed wing design. So not only is there a stub wing in the middle of the vehicle, but the ducts themselves in forward flight uh, really represent what's called a ring wing design. So the ducts themselves in forward flight generate lift as well, creating a much higher level of efficiency in forward flight. How, how long have you guys been working on this? So we've been working on this particular design for more than a couple of years at this point, but the fundamentals of the technology we've been developing for more than 30 years. Are, are you taking orders on this now? So we're not taking orders on this vehicle today as we're still maturing the technology and really looking for good consumer feedback from communities and other in interested parties to really help us optimize the design and really make it an integrated part of the mobility ecosystem. Chad, uh, how fast does this thing go and how far can we go 
uh, and, and without refueling? It, well, it's, it's kind of a hybrid, right? It's some electric and some gas? Well, we've taken advantage of hybrid electric propulsion on the, on the aircraft in order to really unlock a new dimension of range and speed with the vehicle. Again, we've done a lot with transformational lift over the years, but this particular vehicle, as we've designed it today, has a capability of about 150 mile range at about 150 miles an hour. So you can really imagine being able to have uh, great reach and great capability in terms of bringing time back into your life. And how, how long does a refuel or a recharge take? So uh, for this vehicle, because it's hydroelectric propulsion, doesn't require recharging per se, uh, but from a refueling standpoint, it's conventional refueling, which can be done fairly quickly at any sort of fuel point. Come on in. All right. Wow, this is awesome. You know, these seats are really nice. It's, uh, it's kind of like being in a Yukon. It's comfortable, uh, really nice fit and finish. Oh, I like the screens on the ceiling. Well, we've really designed the interior of the vehicle to, again, feel like an open, inviting customer experience so that uh, no different than your car, no different than any other type of mass transit, you feel comfortable, it feels welcoming, and it feels like a part where I could commute and go to work, or I could work on my phone, or I could integrate in any number of infotainment systems. The idea is that uh, we will. We'll take this as a taxi. We could go from New York to Philadelphia or New York to Boston, uh, D.C., stuff like that. You can go from L.A. to San Francisco, San Diego, uh, maybe uh, Phoenix. Uh, this is going to revolutionize air travel, I would imagine. That's how you guys are thinking. Well, we're, we're really thinking about how do you unlock the, the third dimension and get above and beyond all of the congestion on the roadways today so that you can really uh, use the vehicle, not to be cliche, but as a time machine. If I, can, if I can take my morning commute that was 45 minutes and reduce it to 15 each way, what would I do with an hour of my time? Would I read more? Would I sleep later? Would I play with my kids? But that's really the point of the vehicle. You could definitely see more people moving further into the middle of the country or the suburbs, further into the suburbs, because because of uh, a vehicle like this, you're calling it a vehicle, that's what it is. We think of it as air travel, uh, and we think of them as planes and helicopters, but this is completely uh, different. Can you talk about the instrumentation up front? Yeah, so we've designed the vehicle to have a pilot seat in it today, but the vehicle from the first day will be fully autonomous. The pilot seat is really about making people feel safe and comfortable and confident in the service today so that, as you pointed out, there's the opportunity for societal mobility with this vehicle as well so you can live and work in places that you weren't able to before in a really affordable way. Very cool. Um, you got cup holders, you got armrests, uh, chargers for your phone. Uh, this is this is a good way to go to go to work. It's certainly a good way to get from place to place. Well, I, I love the thought of uh, me just being able to get up in the morning and pull out my phone and decide what what way I'm going to get to work that day. It could be an electric scooter, it could be ride sharing, or I could want to take an urban air taxi to go from point A to point B. You're saying the mid 20s. What does this have to go through to get approval from, say, uh, the FAA? Well, Bell has a rich experience in certification, and over our 80-year history, we've certified more than 40 vehicles over the time period. And so we have a great relationship with the FAA, and we know each of the inch stones to get from where we are today all the way to a certified vehicle in 2025. You've been doing this a long time. Well, we've been doing transformational lift for more than 40 years today, and that started all the way back with vehicles like the XV-22 uh, with the U.S. Army in the 1950s, but we've continued to look at tilt rotor and transformational lift technologies through the XV-15, X, uh, V-22, and the V-280, and new, new vehicles even above and beyond the vehicle you see here today. We continue to leverage that technology. Are there features I'm missing or safety features that we haven't covered? Well, certainly Bell believes that safety is our number one priority. And so when you think about features, not just the safety of the ducts as you approach the aircraft, that all of the rota rotator parts are all covered and shrouded away, but even in terms of uh, reliability on the, on the vehicle, we have emergency battery backup for our hybrid electric propulsion system. So even if there was a failure of the engine, we have a way to safely take the aircraft to the ground under our own power, which is a really important feature when you think about the reliability of the vehicle. And with multiple rotors, if you were to lose one rotor, you should be able to fly fine. Is that correct? That's correct. We went through many design iterations to find the optimum combination of rotors and other technologies to find the safest and most reliable platform. With six rotors on the vehicle, we are able to tolerate the loss of a rotor and continue to operate the vehicle. Wow. Very, very cool. Chad, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching and giving us your time. You can find more on BeTerrific.com. And, of course, you.
be terrific.